a do, lot of do you think that that that, that uh, directors writers like Billy Wilder during that period of time were more respected I yeah then and why do you think that is they dress better <laughs> <laughs> he was a snappy yeah, he, was. Billy Wilder. Yes, he was I don't know why honestly uh I think there's like a real, I think Hollywood was probably, it, it had kind of like a more fun vibe back then. It seemed like there wasn't that much that was that intense. It was kind of like the heyday of it. People were, it was such a, people were so excited that they, that movies existed that I think there was kind of and, an overall levity to yeah, it. Yeah, and there, there wasn't a general need to like sell Lego for the Lego movie back yeah. then too. You right. Know, it's just way more businessy. Yeah, but I think like, I think there's like I think there's a self ascribed mysticism that a lot of directors have. I think like like we've directed movies now. It's not the hardest job on set. Like it no, like definitely it, the hardest job is producing. Yeah, like any getting doubt. we keep like what we always say is like getting a movie made is way harder than making a movie. Like once you're there making the movie, it's fun. Like you yeah, know, like the like, analogy is like the writer like makes the blueprints for a car, the producer gets the money and the parts, and the director gets to drive it. Exactly, it's a, it's exactly right. Like it, and driving the car is fantastic. It's it's everything else that's really hard. And so I think yeah, a lot of directors kind of like to portray that they are this the the single beating heart that is bringing life to the movie, you know. But it's just not. I think a lot of people in this audience are probably very happy to hear <laughs> what you say, that, that, that it's nice to hear that writers and directors and producers, as you, as you guys are, are as um, appreciative as the part of the job that you do and that many of the people in the audience do. Um, oh, they're not appreciative of it, but oh, this yeah. is just how it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no we, one else thinks like this. We, we only think that because we were well, mostly I appreciate producers. It. Yeah, exactly. I, I certainly appreciate we it. We just having done all those jobs now know that it's, it's, nice. it's the hardest thing to do is get to the point where they give you the money to go make your movie. Everything else is like writing a movie is fun. You know, everything else is fun. It's, it's, it's that step that sucks. The sucky step <laughs> yeah. in the handbook. The flip side of that is you also have to be responsible with the money that they give you to make it. And like that's how, and so that's we as a group, we take both those things yeah. seriously. It all bleeds into itself. Like, like creatively, the finances are like, you can't, like lots, of, I, we've worked with directors who want to think that they are like two different things, but there's massive overlap between your creative ambitions and your financial resources. Yeah, we always talk and, like, what would happen if at another company, that's how the head of the company behaves? Yeah, and so as directors, we're, the fact that we're directors and producers is helpful because we know the real ramifications of, let's say like, well, we want five days to shoot the scene. Well, we can only afford three days to shoot the scene or two days to shoot the scene or one day to shoot the scene we you know if we were just the directors we would tell ourselves to go fuck ourselves and we'd then have to deal with that but <laughs> we uh but because we can't do that we don't and we, we have we've started to do it a little more tried, but we <laughs> well there are times where producing and directing are directly conflicting jobs like as a director you want everything like it's your job to try to obtain as many things as you humanly can and push your resources as far as you humanly can so that when you're editing the movie you have everything you would fathomably need to put together a great product you know um and often that's directly at odds with logistical limitations and financial limitations and emotional limitations and things that as a producer you're trying very hard to control and keep within a a, a neat package so things aren't exploding all over the place you know um and so yeah the fact that we have to deal with both you know, we we're we're you know eventually the ones who get the call from the studio if it goes way over budget. So as directors, we can't do that. How have you guys done on your budgets? We've been good. Yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've never gone. Is uh, that something that you're you feel good about? I mean, are you are you guys very conscious about being? responsible to the studio in terms of your budgets we swing back and forth <laughs> i think so i think so i mean the truth is you know both this is the end both 50 50 or all three 50 15 neighbors and this is the end all were made at incredibly aggressively budgeted levels for the level i mean you know it's been out there in the press neighbors we made for 18 million dollars you know that's a that's a pretty uh, aggressive uh number for a big studio R-rated comedy. But the thing about the budget conversation is you have to be, you have, you have to get into the specifics because the truth is, 
even at, you know, even when Seth and Evan are wearing the producer hat, if people are coming to us and saying, well, we want this or that, it's understanding like the context. You're never going and asking, just give us more, just more because. It's always about the specifics of what yeah. you're looking for. And sometimes they've helped you wind up in the position <laughs> where you need more money as well through their True. own odd. Some helpful notes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs>